townships. It really is. Hey, Mark. You guys, can you guys hear me? Am I allowed to switch computers? Yeah. Okay. I don't know what, I mean, the, the video on this one is not as good, but um, I don't, I've never had that problem with the, uh, the other one, but if it's working, it's working. Um, all right. Um, so yeah, I just I I uh, wasn't sure if you guys could hear me, so I just went ahead and started the recording since um, since you guys are already talking about stuff. Um, so I I haven't heard from Sam and uh, Brian's out. I haven't heard from Monk. Um, so uh, this might be it, um, but. Uh, your your video is working, Mark. <laughs> Even if your audio is not, so uh, somebody has like TV or something going on in the background. I'm sorry. Yeah. This is me. Uh, is it messing things up for you? No, I mean it's. I mean it might be hard for people to to hear. Um, but that's. Oh. Uh, hey, honey, know. can you turn you, that down just a little bit? Yeah, my so, son's uh, watching Pokemon. Ah, uh, yeah. Um, so you guys were uh, we're talking about you just sort of like well, we we're trying to figure out what was going on with the multiple audio issues and uh, trying to some people that had said they were going to be here. Um, we're not maybe maybe next time we have a holiday weekend, I'll just cancel it instead of <laughs> expecting people to actually be truthful when they say they're going to show up. Um, so. Um, I don't know that we're looking at Labor Day, I guess, is the next one. But um, but anyway, yeah, if you guys, you know, uh, want to keep talking about that, that's been something that we've talked about. Um, I know Mark was really actually interested in like music that's happened during um, during the uh, all the different, um, you know, self isolation quarantine. It's called different things, different places. And it's, you know, um, enacted <laughs> you know it's enforced differently different places too um so i mean i having different words for it i guess if we're all consistent in how we use the words then it would make sense to have different words but um but uh but i, I but basically i mean i i don't think that the um the whole protest music discussion is is necessarily um disconnected from the the covid conversation so i mean especially in places like uh like South Africa with some of the stuff. I don't know how much of that um, got recorded right at the beginning. Um, so I don't know if you want to just talk a little bit about some of the things that are going on in South Africa, Sean, because I think that's definitely related to the, to the protest music topic. Okay. Um, well, we actually, there was a, a punk band called Color Bone Black that, re release an, that recently released a track um, and it's members of a ska punk band from Joburg called Fuzzy Gish and a punk band from Cape Town called The Piss Ups and they recorded via um, basically sending each other sound files. Um, but yeah, um, that that's kind of somewhat related to, lock, well, related to lockdown, but um, I guess what I was saying earlier was that um, we've been having a hard military lockdown where you basically have to, if you want to go outside or you want to go to work, you basically have to have a permit which classifies you as an essential worker. Um, because the sort of narrative by government is that they are very worried about the virus hitting the townships because if they hit, if the virus hits the townships, people don't really have running water or electricity and they're very closely clumped together. So, you know, it's gonna be very bad. Um, but, you know, that's what they say. But then at the same time, I think, you know, they're actually just worried about their own skin. You know, they don't, they don't want people spreading it to then spread to them because they don't really care about 
the police or the military um, killing innocent people who are just sort of going to the shops or just, you know, so, yeah. Man, I thought I had things to worry about. And hearing that you might get killed just going to sh the grocery store is unbelievable. Yeah. It's not so bad, um, say, where I am now. I'm in an area called Sydenham. Um, and there aren't that many cops and military around here. Um, so it's generally, they're, they're sort of targeting certain areas just to, um, like, like, I think here they think people, people are probably gonna, you know, just hear what government says and then stay home. They're not gonna really like fight it. Um, there's unfortunately a lot of um, sort of people in the townships who, you know, don't really believe like the whole virus thing and they kind of like, oh, well, I'm strong. It's okay. You know, nothing's going to happen to me. So I think maybe, um, maybe that's, that's another reason that they're, they're sort of putting putting uh, military and police personnel in, in certain areas. They're also blocking off highways and stuff like that. So if you're not, if you're not taking a highway or you're not trying to go from one province to another province, you're, you're generally going to be okay if you stick in a sort of built up suburban area, like you, you probably don't have to really worry about the police. Like they haven't, um, so far, like white, white folks um, haven't really had a problem with police or military. Sadly, that seems to be the case many places. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it, it doesn't matter. Like, South Africa is a weird, uh, like, I think, like a weird sort of, like, case study or situation where, you know, it's it's visible that it doesn't matter what skin color the police are, they're still going to target people of us was that me or sean that cut out uh, no. no like if, oh, like, okay, if, the, yeah. if the cops are like i don't know if sean dropped out yeah maybe maybe he um okay uh, one thing we can we can kind of talk about um, that I, I've been thinking a lot about this week. Well, not I mean not like in depth because I just but the, the question keeps popping into my head. I don't I don't have an answer. Um, but uh, it was sort of like when people wanted to talk about protest music, like like what is protest music? Like I mean, it's very clear like what political music is. But uh, but what is protest music? Um, so I don't know if people have have like if those are the same thing as or um, I don't I don't think Mark's audio is working. So I guess I'm asking you, Caleb. <laughs> oh really? Oh yeah. yeah. Uh, so what's the difference between protest music and what was the other option? And just like political music, you know, like, um, oh. you know, like, so I, I think, I guess to me, when I think some of protest music, are, some bands make only political music. I think of the Dead Kennedys, you know. Seems like. Did he, did Doug just. He's coming out? back. No, oh, okay. no, I I was typing to uh, to Sean. Uh, he he came in first before I did earlier, so like he didn't have the password because it hadn't been set yet. Um, oh, and so I was just giving him the the password. Um, so that may have happened to you in the past, Caleb. If you oh, show up before, because when we when we finish the like when everybody leaves, the password like gets removed. So like you know you have to reset it every time. So, like, in theory, oh. somebody could join and, like, change the password to be something else, and then we would have to, like, use a new room, um, which wouldn't be the end of the world. But, um, yeah, so uh, anyway, um, yeah, I mean, I, I guess, you know, I, I think of, like, 
drum circles being like something that people would do like at a protest, you know, like um, a drum circle. There's a lot of like yeah. chanting to it protests, like, um, but I, don't know, I guess I guess people don't usually take like amps and guitars and microphones to protest, you know, like there's no like you know they might be like moving the protest or they might. I mean, I guess I guess if you have a protest staged at like a governor's mansion or something like that, then it's stationary Born enough Portland, to like, yeah. The Portland so, protests have marching bands. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I think there is like certainly like um, you know, a certain a certain uh there, there could be. Um but I, yeah. Um you just need a I think Sean's back. Hand. Yeah. Uh, well, you, sorry. <laughs> well, I know I know that like here are the protests they've like they've walked a lot um you know like they've been like marches and stuff so like if you do that you have like even if it's a wireless amp you have to have like you know th that stuff is heavy <laughs> yeah so i mean i guess if you're like maybe that's one reason like folk music is associated with um protests a lot is because like you know it's just uh, like someone in a guitar yeah then like you could that's 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 light enough that you can you can carry it with you um but like you know you're like the ba like if you had a whole band like so we were talking about ska i think before the one the pre recording but like if you have a whole ska band like even just keeping all of those members like in the same location if you were like moving around could be could be difficult um so um what i what i had asked sean um was just like what caleb's thoughts were about like political music versus protest music i had i had this feeling that even though we sort of like labeled the topic as protest music that we'd end up talking mostly about like political music in general um but which is fine um but i just i just wondered if people like separated those things in, in their head so i think like when i think of protest music i generally think of like atari teenage riot um, oh what is that um so they were like a, a electronic punk band um i know who they are hmm. yeah there's there's like a few youtube videos of them at actual riots and they're basically on a float and they're they're playing everything through speakers and they're sort of inciting the crowds to fight the police <laughs> nice my, I saw Atari Teenage Riot when I was a kid. Oh, wow. Cool. Yeah. They came to my town. I was surprised that they came to my town. <laughs> wow. That's pretty cool. Yeah, Mark, I think we, uh, I think it's working. You're kind of quiet. But... Is, it, is it working? Yes, now it's working. Okay. Uh, Welcome. I'm going to take the handheld recorder. <laughs> <laughs> Nice mic. Yeah. Yeah, it's a Zoom recorder. Oh. So I'm impressed. Just for mobile recording, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, but I don't understand why the headset is not working. When I connect it to the recorder, it doesn't work. Yeah, I know. Computers are like that. I, I, I used to program them, and I still don't... I don't know. I, there may be a reason I don't program them anymore. <laughs> the uh, another thing that uh, I mean, this is a, th this wouldn't necessarily work for um, for a band, but uh, if you just wanted to like play some music, I just dropped a uh, an image in the um, in the chat, and um, I, we haven't ever done it, uh, but there is the option to share a YouTube video. Um, and, and I think I did once share um, my screen uh, on on here. Um, I'm trying to see. I don't see the share screen. Oh, no. oh yeah, yeah. I, I pressed it accidentally. I think because it, it looks a lot like the chat button. So there's like the like monitor, and then the raise your hand, and then the open close. Um, but the, the box of the monitor and the box for the chat look pretty similar, I think. But uh, 
But yeah, the, the whole sound system thing, I guess, could have been. Um, I read like a decade or so ago this book on like um, on like protest music in the UK and stuff, and sort of like the, the sound system scene. But like, I don't remember much of anything about that book, <laughs> except that like, you know, speakers on bikes. <laughs> That's about the only thing I remember, sadly. Um, I'll see if I can find um, find that book though, because I remember it being good, um, you know, or interesting when I was reading it. It just didn't it just didn't stick with me for some reason. So. Somehow your audio was really robotic at the moment. Oh, mine? I don't know if it's my connection, yeah. Or... Mm. Uh, might be my connection. Yeah. Uh, on Wi-Fi. Was uh was it robotic, Caleb? No, you you're you might be muted, Caleb. Yeah, he's muted. Yeah, you're muted. You you sound okay to me. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And then it's my connection. My, um, my son's playing with a remote control car, so I'm trying to keep the sound <laughs> down. Yeah. He, he, has a, he has a fascination with remote control vehicles, and the newest one is a remote control RV. So it's pretty funny. Um, it's what? You... Toaster on wheels, yeah. Toaster. So uh, you had said, Caleb, that you were really uh, looking forward to the chat. So I know in the um, in the little ch the chat box, you mentioned uh, Mark Rabot's "Songs of Resistance," and that's that's the only one that uh, that you mentioned. So I guess probably you had um, you had some stuff to say if you were looking forward to it. So oh, I just I always look forward to the chats, Doug. This, uh, uh, but uh, yeah, the Songs of Resistance is a great album that came out, you know, a few months ago. Um, and there are Songs of Resistance against, you know, the administration here in the U.S. And uh, I thought it was a pretty good album. A lot of people were on it with uh, Mark Rabot, and it was pretty good. So anyway, I just thought it was worth mentioning. Oh, yeah, yeah for sure. Uh, one thing that I... In my a lot of story guest appearances. Ah, yeah, yeah. Um, one thing that uh, might be interesting about my my sound system book that I um, that I mentioned is uh, I, I checked it out from um, from an info shop in Madison. They had um, the info shop. That maybe info shops everywhere do this. This is the only one that I've ever I've ever used like this. I've been in other ones, but um you know they would they had a, a book lending um thing where you know you wrote down your name and what book you took and stuff um but uh so that's where that's where i got that book so i guess i guess it had some uh political bona fides being at an info shop but none of that helps me remember what the name of the book was <laughs> or anything about the book <laughs> <laughs> i love that you're gonna remember it as soon as we end the chat too, or we end the uh, day today. It'll come. Yeah. Tomorrow. Well, hope, hopefully, I can. I can at least like. I think I'll, if I see the cover, I think that I'll be like, yeah, that was it. But um, and then I can, I can, you know, share it with you guys and yeah. you, you can take a look at it. But um, but yeah. So um, Sean, uh, you have. Or, or sort of the, I guess the main protagonist at a, um, I think to a lot of people it sort of like would appear as a as a to be a net label, um, which we talked about recently. But um, but I think you guys bill yourselves as a collective. So uh, I know you guys have some um, some political stuff there, and you're also you also do like or did I guess um, some live shows um, or help help promote and bands with live shows and stuff so um do you want to talk about that for a little bit okay yeah um so i've i've kind of because um how to put this um i listened to uh laura jane grace's audiobook um uh so tales of punk rock's most infamous sellout 
And in that book, uh, she states that anytime you hear someone classify something as a collective, um, <laughs> you must be wary of it. So I was like, okay. Um, so I, I'm basically, we've been calling it like a, a platform, you know, just like a platform for um, local punk and underground music. Um, so yeah, it's, it's kind of like a net label and a blog. And um, we also, we set up local shows. Um, before lockdown, we were doing a lot of shows up in Joburg at a, at a bowl, uh, bowls club, um, Zoo Lake Bowls Club. We were trying to do like a show a week. I mean, not a week, a, a month. Um, and just make them quite like diversified with the sort of different styles of music. Um, yeah. <laughs> I don't actually know what to say. Um, yeah, it's, so it's... <laughs> I may have misremembered because I, I was looking at the site and uh, it says um, nonprofit record distro and community. So I may have, I may have uh, remembered collective when it actually said. No, no, um, it, it, it said collective. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, so I'm just yeah, I'm, I'm trying to use the word platform more just because yeah, I mean yeah. it's mainly like me and my friend Conley who do most of the stuff um, under the name um, we did this records, so you know it's it's sort of like it's a community in the sense that you know when we do stuff a lot of people help out, um, but. Um, him and I are the only people who really sort of initiate things under the banner. So, yeah. Um, I don't think you said, Sean, I mean, we talked a bit about being in South Africa. Uh, what city are you based in? Uh, Johannesburg. Okay. And then, so is that when you, when you do shows and stuff, or is it mostly in the Johannesburg area or is it all around the country or? Yeah, it's it's mostly Johannesburg unless we're um, doing a tour or we're helping out like a touring band from overseas with a tour. Um, then we'll try and set up shows in as many places as possible. Um, the problem with South Africa and touring is that everything's extremely far apart. Um, the only That's place... relative. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, I mean, you're talking to two people from the U.S., so, I mean, like, to me, South Africa is a small country. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. certainly not. Yeah, but I think I think in the States it's, um, or from what, what I hear about tours in the States is that, you know, you could do, like, a small DIY tour and basically have, like, a few stops between, like, major points that you want to get to. Um, I'm not sure if that's still accurate. Yeah, but, I mean, um, I guess it, uh, if you if you just want to do like an East Coast tour or a West Coast tour mm -hmm. or something like that, you could, you could definitely do that. Yeah, yeah. Here, um, like the only real feasible places to play are um, Johannesburg, Cape Town, and Durban. Ah. So it's like three spots that are like on opposite sides of the country. Like, yeah. yeah and then um i guess so so i mean there are other cities that just don't have the draw you know like port elizabeth yeah. or yeah. Um, yeah there's like you can stop in bloom but currently or at least last i heard there's no venues like there's no places uh, to play okay. um the last yeah. venue closed down um, so yeah, every now and then like a venue will pop up or someone will be doing shows. Like there used to be a punk festival in Bloemfontein called, um, damn, what was it called? Um, oof. I've learned the name, the names, um, escaped me, but it, it was on, uh, um, obscene fest. So it was basically on a, on someone's farm. 
and people would like camp over the weekend and there would be like an acoustic stage and like a you know full band stage and it would be mainly like punk and metal bands um but that's that hasn't happened for like nearly 10 years now oh so, wow yeah yeah I, I you know obviously like borders are a problem everywhere mm -hmm. um i mean i guess less so in the eu but um i mean it looks like you know if you want wanted to if you could get all the countries and i don't know what the situation is but you could like put together like a like a starting in botswana like in um got our own um and then like you would go down i guess highway four and then you could hit i mean pretoria i i, I don't know is that kind of like considered like the johannesburg metro area i mean they're, they're not super far apart but, but would you get people to go up to pretoria if there was a show there or yeah but um the thing is like pretoria shows are generally empty um yeah. like we we had leftover crack in pretoria basically playing oh. 10 people oh wow yeah that's yeah. crazy <laughs> yeah it yeah um pretoria is good for like dance music they have a lot of like electronic festivals there even the the rock clubs that did exist I, I think all of them have shut down now they've gone bankrupt due to the epidemic um but th those ones basically they would have one night or two nights a month a month where they would book like rock bands or indie bands or something like that but the turnout would be like very very small um so yeah um i think the the electronic music scene here um, is quite big. Um, there's a lot of clubs in town in like Joburg Center, um, that's like the CBD and Newtown, who um, host a lot of a lot of like DJ and electronic um, shows, and those are quite diversely attended. Um, the the punk and metal scene here is like very white. Um, and the the bands the bands and the the people who attend who say are from Soweto and stuff like that um it's more like it's more like like their their approach is more like just to have fun and stuff like they the songs aren't really political or anything like that um there's one hip hop group in Cape Town that I know of called Sounds of the South, and they have an a song called um, what's it called? Um, Sabalaza, and that's that's pretty much the only sort of political hip hop song I know about, and political group that I know about. Um, what does that mean? How would you translate that title? Um, well, there, there's an anarchist group actually at Fitz University called Zabalaza, and it's um, I'm not. I think it's it's got something to do with like people power or something like that. I'm I'm not a hundred percent sure. I'm gonna have to look it up. Yeah. Yeah. So I was just uh, I was looking up that. Um, I think I think this is the one you were talking about, probably um, the leftover crack tour in uh, 2017. Yeah, yeah, and so they yeah two shows in Johannesburg and then the Pretoria one and then Durban and Cape Town. So yeah, that's yeah. The, um, yeah. yeah. Uh, it was it was quite a flop. Uh. <laughs> oh, um, so we just checked it up. Uh, Zabalaza means struggle. Good to know. Yeah. yeah. That was also a bit of unfortunate because the guy who actually started the anarchist group at Fitz University, who started the Zabalaza group, um, he's actually like a world known author. 
um, he wrote a book called Black Flame on like the history of anarchism in Africa. And it turns, he turned out to be a white nationalist. Like they found he had profiles on Stormfront and he was trying to start like this, this whole separatist group called Black Battlefront and like really some dodgy stuff. So they booted him off AK Press and you know, he's been like um, sort of shunned by the group that he started. They've, um, yeah, it's quite a thing. Wow. <laughs> I'm just like the bearer of bad news. <laughs> no, 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 you're not. I, I, just, I just think it was interesting what else happened to this band I've never heard before. Oh. Yeah. Complex. Mm. White power and anarchism. Okay, I was like, I just tried to get my head around this concept. <laughs> I yeah. see that all the time. <laughs> yeah, it's called national anarchism. So it's actually there. There's there's, it's like a white nationalist separatist um, sort of thing. Yeah, Na national anarchism. It's very very dodgy. Yeah. yeah. I uh, I dropped this in there. I think it might have been when Sean um, dropped, but I, I dropped in the chat the um, most MVs. Brian had said he was going to be able to come, and then he wasn't able to. But um, this is uh, goes back to the um, – there was a police killing in, um, in Cincinnati. Um, this hands up uh, – hands, hands held high is the name of um, – Brian's track, and that's one. Um, well, I mean, actually, both of both of the releases on there. Um, let's see, got a a side and a B side, I guess. Um, are um, are quite political. There's a fair amount of uh, political stuff. Um, I mean, you go, you go. There's a fair amount of not at all political stuff too um, <laughs> on Black Sonic. But uh, let's see if I can find. Monks, um, he's not on blocks on it, but since he said that he might be able to, he, to come, um, let's see if I can find his. When I saw the topic to, uh, for this week, I was like just thinking, okay, I just two weeks ago I bought the whole David Rovick's collection. Oh, yeah, he's pretty political. <laughs> Yeah, D David Rovix, if you guys aren't, uh, well, he's he's from he's, he travels a lot, but he's from uh, from Portland, so you, you're probably aware of him, Caleb, right? My friend Aragorn um, was actually uh, traveling around and trying to film a documentary about um, sort of political sh struggles around the world and um, sort of anarchists and um, he he apparently um, interviewed David Rovix in um, in a hot tub um, but the film's never gonna come out because he doesn't know anything about editing <laughs> 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 so, yeah Oh yeah, that's. Uh, I was trying to think. I was like, I'm pretty sure this is a political one, but um, I couldn't remember. I just uh, I, I just found out a friend of mine cut an album with Anthony Braxton, and it cannot be released. So why uh, why can't it be released? Because he uh, he just he voiced an opinion on Facebook about someone. And it was someone that Anthony Braxton had actually taught. And uh, Anthony Braxton caught ear of it and decided not to release the album because of it. Mm. 
That's kind of unfortunate. Yeah. But I got a copy, and uh, anyway, I can't share it or anything. But <laughs> it's, it's awesome. So, yeah, cool. I wonder how many albums have been stuck in, with, and like without getting released, you know, without being able to be released for similar reasons. I think it'd be an interesting thing to know about. Or just have a collection of those kind of albums if you could get your hands on them. Yeah, I, them. I I mentioned the um, Machina two once before on here. I think do you remember that, um, Caleb? Uh, um, you know, we talk about a lot of things. I, I it doesn't yeah. come to mind immediately, unfortunately. Well, I'll, uh, I'll what, what about it? Well, that's another one. I mean, this one kind of got, it didn't get like a real release, but it got a, um, it, um, so I think what they did is they made like 25 copies of it and send out oh. to their like super, super fans. And then if you go on archive.org, you'll see that like, there's all these different, well, there's at least a handful of like different rips, you know, it's like Lee's rip roses rip you know and so like they've you know they have slightly different um you know like audio um equipment for playing the the record i think it was a you know it was like a was vinyl and so the vinyl sound is uh is a bit different off of there um you know i guess it hasn't been like mastered you know and to like get it but uh so it's kind of kind of interesting um <laughs> the way that you know, but i'm sure there are um there are plenty of examples of you know just musicians these days it's probably happens less because um people can just put stuff out you know on band camp themselves or wherever um Maybe one day people will be able to release stuff on the Free Music Archive again. Um, but uh, you know, back in the day, you know, if uh, the label was not wanting to put it out, then it just it just wouldn't get put out. So uh, uh, yeah, there's, there still hasn't been a uh, a 2020 update on the FMA, which is. Pretty, uh, pretty frustrating. Um, I don't know if uh, if you know anything about that situation while while we're talking about it, Mark, or if you've heard anything. No, not really. But I've, yeah. I have an, another another band where it actually took like very long time. Release was officially planned for '94. And then in 2016, they released it on the Creative Commons. Oh, yeah. I just tried to, to, to find it. And it was like, the, I believe the, the record company at the time just decided at the last moment, no, we, we're not going to release it. And it was like fully produced album. Um, oh, yeah, I found it. Class with Jinkies here. That's the one. I believe, yeah. Unfortunately, this uh, record label is not active anymore. It was a good one. I liked them very much. No, I hear nobody anymore. Yeah, I stepped to. <laughs> I, I stepped out to to <laughs> fill my my water. Um, so yeah, I I, I figured. I th my wife is watching uh, Hamilton, and uh, we watched it yesterday. It was great. Yeah, I um, she's yeah. seen it in theater a couple times, but it's really a different. Ex How fortunate! A different ex yeah, um, it, it well, it came, it came to Minneapolis, so um, yeah, yeah, that's uh, incredible. Yeah, I was so impressed, and I was so glad they didn't try to release it as some kind of movie or something. That would have been awful. You know, I mean, it, it, 
It could have been good. I mean, no, come but, on, man. It would definitely be awful if they tried to make well, a new movie. Maybe with Disney in charge, but yeah. I, I don't know. it'd be a tough. Mm. It'd be a tough thing to try to turn into something that's not. They did a really good job with the way they intermixed the music and the. Uh, the staging i was really impressed with the way the lighting and staging had been done the set was very minimal you know but they they did a lot with it it was pretty incredible i thought from that perspective too hey guys i gotta get i gotta check out of here it looks like it's go time <laughs> okay <laughs> uh I, I want to say, say that I enjoyed being here as usual. And, uh, Caleb, it's great talking um, to you guys. Yeah. Before you go, um, next week you're in charge of recording. I won't be here. Okay, you you have to tell me how to do that. I have no idea. Just um, down at the bottom right. Yeah. yeah. The, oh yeah. There's the. Um, I don't know if it will let me unless you give me permission to do that or something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Any, anybody anybody can do it. Um, oh really. Yeah, you just got to set up your um, Dropbox, um, or if you prefer YouTube, um, th those are the two options they have, record straight to Dropbox or share to, to YouTube. Um, and How do then, I do uh, that? Down in the bottom right, there's um, more three actions. Dots. Yeah, the three dots, and then right. you can see um, that there's... Um, Start live stream or no? No, well, yeah. I mean, I think you can't do it now because we're already recording. Right. But, yeah. I have you to share the YouTube video. What was that? Available. I have to share to a YouTube video available here. No, uh, that's share a YouTube video. So we could we could like oh, watch oh. YouTube. Video. We could have a watch party. Um, yeah. I should learn to which is not something we've done, but we could we could try it out. I don't know how that would show up on recording, but um, but it might be good to get like a playlist. I mean, YouTube is, you know, not the greatest organization in the world, but um, that's what they have on here. So, is there anything I need to have to be able to do this? Like no passwords, website, when we, special login. No, when we just, just use your own Dropbox, um, and okay. then um, yeah, you can post the Dropbox li links in the Facebook group um, once that's done, and then people can can download and put it on YouTube or whatever. All the all the YouTube videos that uh, I upload are um, CCBY, so anybody can just grab those videos and you know put them wherever. So um, I used to put stuff on archive.org, but it just is like so slow that stopped i figure if somebody wants it on archive.org they can take the time to, to do it so, um but yeah but yeah once we leave um it, it'll um it'll re, you know remove the password and so next week um you know if you don't remember to put the password up it's not a big deal i don't think that spam is going to be a huge problem but um i still do it just to try to like minimize it a little bit so where do I put the password up? There's that little green thing there. Or I see it is green. It's right beside the three dots. Security options? Yeah, so you can um you can um if you're the first one in, you can well maybe I was the second one in, I would set it, but uh I think but whoever wants to set it first can set it, <laughs> basically is the way that goes. And then once it's set, then um you know. Like I said, it, it's it's good for the for the for the recording, and then um, once everybody leaves, it re removes the password. I'm not friends with everyone on Facebook, so how would I know if someone was trying to get in and they didn't have a password? Um, I mean, the password is the same every week, and it's posted on the chat. So hopefully, okay, people just sure. Read that. Um, All right. But, yeah. Okay. You can also put it in those in this info box, Doc. Yeah, you can also just not put a password. <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I, mean, like, I might just, do that option. Yeah, I mean, that's the easiest thing to do. Is just like it'll get a password will get erased when we all leave the room, and then next week, presumably, assuming there hasn't been a hostile takeover, then everybody can just join without password. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right, guys. All right, Caleb. 
Later. Have Later. Fun. Bye. 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 Yeah, that'll be in Duluth um, next week, which probably doesn't mean anything to either one of you. But um, it's about two hours north of here. Um, I mean, you know, they have internet. I could, uh, I could, in theory, sign in. But who knows what will be. They have a lot of trails and stuff up there, so it might be out on the trail. Um, all right, I'm still uh, looking for this uh, this book title. Um, I'm scrolling through <laughs> images. Uh, I should just uh, message Clint, who was the guy at the info shop, see if he remembers. <laughs> He's not on very much, though. Um, get a uh, an answer very quickly, I don't think. But yeah, we can um, we can keep talking. Um, you know, as long as people have things to uh, to discuss. Um, I was thinking of asking, what was everyone's introduction to protest music? Or oh, that's a that's an interesting question. Um, I would say that the one that, I don't know if it was tr truly int the intro introduction, but the one that made probably the biggest impression on me early on would have been Rage Against the Machine. Um, okay, nice. So, um, yeah, I was on the, the Rage Against the Machine, um, uh, I don't know if it was a fan mailing list or like their official mailing list or what, but I got like, um, I got some like weekly like news. And um, I remember that, that um, like some, some kid had like worn a Rage Against Machines shirt to, to school. And like, I don't remember what happened, but basically he got in trouble and, free speech and stuff but um but yeah so that that was that was uh for me what about you um did you did you see um what's the guy's the guitarist of rage against the machine um uh, tom morello. Got, yeah tom morello he's got yeah. a new sort of struggle protest music record label thing called firebrand records oh uh, i don't think i knew that Hmm. Okay, he started it with Ryan Harvey, who um, was part of uh, Riot Folk, the Riot Folk Collective, and part of like the anti-globalization form forum. Like Ryan Harvey's stuff is um, quite similar to David Rovick's, um, similar sort okay. of folk music style. Um, mine, mine would be, um, propagandi. <laughs> That's, that was probably my introduction, um, to protest music. I can't really tell when I <laughs> contact to protest music. Um, so it could have been, no, I, I really don't know. One thing that's uh like music from the sixties or seventies. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The um Bob Dylan is from Minnesota, actually. Um speaking of music from the sixties and seventies. Um mm -hmm. it's more than any I mean anybody else in the protest music it, it's funny i sometimes um i forget sometimes that bands are from here like uh like semi-sonic like is from from minneapolis which not really protest music but um just just an example of somebody that i had for completely forgotten they were from here and then the other day i was like oh yeah they're they're from minneapolis um so 
there might be somebody that I'm I'm forgetting. Um, oh, this this didn't work at all. My post. I totally messed up the uh, the time zones. Ah. Uh, I have to fix that. I was trying to like be helpful and put protest and put put the time zone a bunch of time zones in here, but then when I was trying to put the Kazakhstan um, Kazakhstan time in here, I apparently erased all the other time zones, and now it just says Asia slash Almaty, which I don't know what Almaty is. Um, so I was just gonna put UTC plus six, which is what Kazakhstan is, but. Now it just says Asia slash Almighty, which is uh, Almaty is the city. not helpful for anybody. Was that? Almaty is the city. Not Almaty. Where Where is Almaty? Is Is the biggest city in Kazakhstan? Well, I thought. Uh, huh. I thought Astana was the biggest city in Kazakhstan. No. Interesting. So, is it not the second biggest city? 1.9 million citizens living in that city. Quite big. Mm, yeah. Yeah, so uh, Astana is the second largest. Um, so there you go. Although Astana is not Astana anymore, it's Nur Sultan, Sultan um, as of last year, I believe. I uh, I once read a uh, you know like a list of like coldest capitals on the planet, and there there are two capital cities that are colder than Minneapolis in January. It's you know it's hot here in summer. We get four real seasons, but um, Astana and Udlenburg are, are the only two who are just a little bit warmer or a little bit colder than um, than Moscow. I was only looking at country capitals. Anyway, um, one thing that's, uh, this is true about like protest music, but also like re religious music. I've never quite understood why, why like Creative Commons has not been embraced. Like by anybody who has like a message, you would think that like being able to get the message out there would be useful. But the, um, the Catalan in Spain, they do that. The, the Catalan artists, because they don't, they hardly get any contracts with with Spanish record companies. They use a lot yeah, of yeah, yeah. commons. So if you go on Bandcamp, you, you find lots and lots of Catalan bands. Are there any um, like collections, net labels or otherwise? You know, is there anybody collecting this stuff or is it all just sort of like putting it on Bandcamp? I, I don't know one of out of my head as I find some, those artists every now and then, uh, but yeah, the Bandcamp search is always very, very full when you're looking for like Catalan and Creative Commons songs, just because they don't have any support from the government. Yeah, yeah and for and, sure. And, and, <clears throat> and whatever. So, oh my God. Five page. It's oh. really the the only the only area where I know that those artists are, are using that just to as a form of self defense. I didn't mean to turn that off. I was trying to paste <laughs> the keystroke. Apparently, kind of video. I think locally in South Africa, a lot of people don't know about Creative Commons. Like they don't, they don't. I don't think the the knowledge of there being different sorts of licensing that you can publish stuff under is um, sort of um, all that well known or maybe accessible to people. Um, so. Yeah. 
So I think maybe maybe that's a thing locally. Um, yeah, I also think it's an educational problem. Yeah. Um, because now, for instance, we have this in Germany, we had the, the introduction of this Corona app and everybody is now, what, you can do that open source? Yeah, mm. you can do everything open source and everybody can ex actually look into it. But yeah. um, it seems like something completely new in 2020. Come on. So if yeah. it takes for uh, the same for Creative Commons, then yeah, I'm probably dead before it really gets into it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, there there was um, for a while, a um, for some time, um, an active um, Creative Commons South Africa group. Um, but it, it, this wiki page hasn't been updated since like 2011. But I, I had I exchanged emails with Kelsey Wines or Williams and I can't remember how to pronounce that, um, who's one of the um, the public leads. I was gonna try to get her on um, on a music monument, but um, it ended up not not ever happening. Um, but uh, yeah, I don't I don't know um, you know what? Whatever happened to um, C Project website? Maybe maybe there's some other stuff going on and that just never got. I mean, the website's still there. Okay. But um, that doesn't necessarily that means somebody's paying the domain fee. I mean, <laughs> yeah. it doesn't doesn't mean a whole lot. Um, oh, forgot to cancel. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's on <laughs> auto, and they're, well, they're paying it. You know. I don't, they're, they're not, uh, yeah, or, or, or not <laughs> yeah yeah for sure um they have yeah, a slack I, channel so that's probably probably pretty new because i mean i don't think slack ex existed in 2011. have you guys seen the documentary punk in africa no nope. i have not okay it's it's free on YouTube currently, um, and there's a lot of stuff in the beginning of that film about early bands um, who um, sort of spoke out against apartheid. Um, there's a whole lot on one band called National Wake, um, who were a band in Joburg that during the height of apartheid um, was comprised of like black and white uh band members and they were living together in a commune um which was completely illegal um at the time they were getting like raided by the police like daily um the band actually broke up when it became like just unmanageable the, the amount of um sort of hassles they were getting um but it's a it's an interesting form um i think like towards the later part of the documentary they sort of like drop the ball a bit and they um sort of just meander and sort of leave out a lot of things and sort of um flail about a bit but um i think the beginning part of the film is is pretty interesting it's always funny to me when like political stuff like this is on places like Amazon, but uh, should you wish to watch Punk in Africa on Prime Video, you can do so. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. so is that? Yeah, I can find it only on YouTube on demand for me here. Uh. And on, yeah, and on Amazon. <laughs> Interesting. Is but, the... Uh, the Go ahead. Uh, continue. Sorry. Oh, I was just gonna say the the YouTube on demand is that like their like a subscription service or is that yeah, like yeah. just yeah, regular? Yeah, I have to okay. profit. Yeah. Yeah, oh, I, I found the version on on YouTube that's uh, free. It's okay. not a subscription. I can I can drop a link to it. Yeah, that'd be great. I, I can I can just demand one. There's no problem. Okay. Um. Also, also, like speaking of um, struggle songs or protest songs, um, our national anthem is a protest song, like the South African national anthem. 
which is, I don't know. Well, it's like that's, uh, you know, you, you like, you have a movement, and then the movement wins, and then yeah. now that now they're the power, so it's kind yeah, of like yeah. it. It was a it was a, a protest song. Yeah, basically more more accurate. Yeah. There's there's actually um, my friend Rob used to be in a band called Outrage during apartheid, and they did a split tape with another Joe Joe Berg punk band that actually covered um, Nkosi Sikolele Africa um, back then when it wasn't a um, when it wasn't the national anthem or anything like that. So if if I can find that, I'll also link that um, in the chat. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'll just take a look for it quick. Yeah, no problem. I'm uh, going through the Block Sonic artist list to see if there's somebody I um, missed as far as um, making political music, but. I just I just saw the slow fi uh, user. The release was was pretty political, huh? Which was C Dog release? The last C Dog release? Oh, the uh was that a six on a seven? Yeah. C Doc is in like so many different groups that uh <laughs> sometimes it's hard to find but that one i think that one's uh actually um actually his america, so the, the, the last one was the was it much on america or what was it called the song the first one on that album well, there's the the june 16th release um mm -hmm. is that yeah, the one exactly exactly it, yeah bring, bring that beat was track one and then everything suits is track two and that so. I'll drop that in the um yeah, I assume that's the one you're talking about. Ain't getting enough much on America a hot to hear. Oh, was that? I, yeah, the I think that seven, must be. Six on a seven plate, yeah. That's the one. Okay. It's a good beat. Affecting the wrong, uh, wrong thing there. So, so that was a uh... well, I also dropped, I, I just found uh, an old eighties, um, a compilation um like a local punk rock bands against apartheid um that i dropped in the chat um it's called uh it's called stop apartheid uh, now south african punk compilation uh kids of the 80s Uh, yeah, so I think uh, it wasn't his last six on a seven that you're talking about. Um, it was the one before that. Um, Still ready, in Mark. Okay. Okay. Well. Yeah, so it's the Division Five Blackout. Is that the one you're talking about? Uh, would be. That one's the Ain't Getting Enough yeah. March on America. Hard yeah, to hear. Yeah. 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 Exactly. yeah so that. 
He they had both, a uh, both as well, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, they both have that six. Uh, they both have road signs on the. Uh, yeah. So yeah, but it's not not that that one's the uh, the one you're talking about, not his, uh, which is not the the latest. It's harder to find um, if you look like through the blog um, post for the releases because that one came out. Um, we talked about this um, a few weeks back, but um, three came out on the same day because uh, I don't remember the exact issues, but Mike had some sort of technical difficulties and, uh, you know, they're supposed to be spaced out one every week. Um, but uh, he just dropped them all um, on the same day because um, things got backed up. So if, um, if you're... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so... Um, so um, on the uh, when we were back when we were using Zoom, it was it was you could download the chat, um, but uh, so much like the password, if you um, once we all leave um, the the Jitsi room, um, it'll clear the chat. So um, just make sure if there's any uh, links that you want to save or stuff that's been shared that you want to listen to just make sure you grab all of that before before we all leave um or else we'll have the issue where you know i read a book and, and then can't remember the name of it or much of anything about it <laughs> yeah maybe i'll uh maybe i'll look for that later and um post it in the um in the Facebook group, when um, if I am able actually to ever find it, um, one thing that I that we did last week that I um, think went pretty well was um, we tried to sort of like pick the topics for the vote, um, and so I guess um, might as well do that. Um, so I used to do like ten, but I think I'm going to make it five just to make life a little bit easier. So um, I know that before, Mark, um, you had wanted, um, you know, COVID music stuff inspired by and written during the um, different quarantine periods. Is that one that you would still like to be on the, on the vote? Um, yeah. I, I'm still more interested in, in the, the question, what, uh, what are the requirements for good music work? What are the um, the requirements for what? For a good music website, like oh. let's say radio, oh, or okay. podcast, or, yeah, yeah. or label, or whatever. Different categories may vary the requirements, you know. Because everyone has like his or her own preferences for. Yeah, yeah, yeah. for sure. When you come to websites, then. I've got both of those on there. Sean, anything that um that uh, you think uh, would be a good a good topic for next week? Even if you can't make it, I can still put it on next week. I can still put it on the poll for people to vote on. Um, I'm I'm terrible on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've got we've got three more, so you've got some time to uh, to think about it. Um, while Mark and I try to piece together a couple more. Um. So uh, I, I have tried to um, battery left, so I might be out. Oh, okay, <laughs> <laughs> all right. Yeah, I'm glad I started this one. I did then. Um, <laughs> I have tried to do um, like geographic based um, stuff before, and people just don't, you know, like let's talk about music from Asia or Africa or Australia or whatever, and those just don't. People just aren't interested in doing that. Um, I mean, maybe they they would be if they knew they had you know somebody local to talk about it. Uh, but one thing that we did do um, back a while, like one of our first shows was talk about local music. And now we have a few um, different people that are participating. So that might be um, a topic to, to revisit. Um, but I will not be here next week. Um, so I don't want to, you know, mm -hmm. I want you guys to to sort of like feed me the ideas but if, if that one seems like it would be good to you guys i'll, I'll put it on there basically okay okay because you weren't involved in that one right mark 
when we had it before. I think that was me, Caleb, and Beth. Yeah, I only and Ben. I, only I think that was later on YouTube. Yeah, so I I think it was us four. Um, the, it was the UK, Portland, and Minneapolis. Um, and so Caleb, if he's here, we'll get another Portland. But but Caleb is like super into his local scene. Um, and so he may have new things to talk about um, next week too. So, um, so we'll, we'll put local music on there. Um, what about uh, like? Um, I mean, so some some of the topics like we've had a couple of good ones where we've had like a very specific. Um, you know, like one person who kind of just like did a lot of the talking and I felt like, you know, those um, kind of went pretty well. Um, we had uh, Ty, who, uh, Ty Christian from Lords of the Trident talked about festivals mostly, um, which was particularly interesting in the, you know, in the COVID situation. Um, and uh, we had um, Aaron on, Aaron Wolf, he talked about microtonal music and the kite, kite guitar. Um, so one thing that, uh, Sean, if you wanted to, uh, I think you have um, some perspective that nobody else does on um, like venues and shows and stuff um, like okay. that. So I, I wouldn't necessarily want to put that on there unless, unless you were like ready to talk about that. And then like, Caleb will ask questions like he's always like interested in that kind of stuff. But um, I think that would be something that people would be interested in. But I don't know if there's going to be that would be something that there would be a lot of discussion about. It would be more Q&A. Um, so if, if that's something that you'd be willing to do, um, I would definitely I, I could put I could put that on there um, as an option. Yeah, I wouldn't mind. I just um, okay. like. Like off off the bat, I, I wouldn't really know how much there is to really talk about it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, hopefully. I mean, if I was there, I mean, maybe this is something we can do in like on the 19th instead of the 12th, because I can definitely talk about my experiences putting on shows and festivals and stuff. Okay. Um, so, so, yeah, you know what? Let's just hmm. put that on the docket, and then I, I'll definitely um, be able to talk a little bit about that um okay. so i would say that aside from um ska that um and that happened because of um very specifically because ben made it very clear that he does not like ska and so everybody just voted for ska just to like <laughs> <laughs> yeah just to rub it in to ben um but uh I think, I mean, so we, I don't think this was recorded, um, but I know that um, that Caleb was talking about, you know, punk music and what does that mean? Uh, again, that's one that I, I could contribute a lot to, um, but there's probably enough people that know about punk to have that without me, too. Um, so I could put that on there. Um, I don't know. Um, would that be something... Like but right. like the, the differences of like what does punk mean yeah i mean i you know when we when we pick the topics they're they're pretty loose yeah you know like it's kind of uh wh whoever shows up and what they want to talk about it just gives somebody you know like a reference point to sort of say like well this is uh you know just so it's not complete yeah. chaos um some sort so, of a bull direction yeah yeah and so um you know and again it's like who knows what who, what people will vote for so um but um it's just but would that be something mark that you would be interested in discussing punk music oh sure all right i put that so we got four one more um on here i know that um victor had been interested in digital merch um i don't know that so like, we we would need somebody who knows about digital merch to have that discussion so i don't know if either of you guys have like 
you know, know much about that kind of stuff. Um, so uh, how, what would digital merch entail? Like, so that, sort of that's part of the question. Um, but there's a lot of different things that it, it could potentially be. Um, so I don't know of an app um, off the top of my head that would would do this sort of thing, but um, like badges um, for sure. So like, let's say, you know, so there's like, um, there's like beer drinking apps and there's all sorts of like athletic apps. And, um, but if you had like a, an app that was like, for listening to music or for going to shows and then you like check in and you get points. Um, and then, you know, um, sir, I mean, I guess it kind of like a, if you if were talking about shows and then you would be you know, almost look like a four square, I don't know if four square is something that they have in mm. outside of the U S but, um, you know, basically the way four square works is if you check in the most or at the right times or whatever, I don't, I never used it. Um, then you could become like the mayor of a place. <laughs> um, so, um, so you want to mix out of four square and last FM then? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, yeah, I mean, that would be one thing way to do it. The other thing is like, um, you could have, um, like this is definitely happens in like sports games where like they'll mod like, um, like the Jersey for like a local team, you know, like not a team that's like in the game, um, but like, so like my scarf back there, both of those are from Minneapolis city SC. And they're like a fourth division side, um, in the U S and so like people will make their jerseys and like, you know, upload them to the sports games and stuff. So, um, you could have something like that where, but it was like, if you were just uploading music or maybe there's like a, a store, but anything, I think, you know, where you have an app where there's any sort of, um, sort of like different ways to like um, different um, entities that are involved in creating content other than just like the app creator, then there's the opportunity for there to be something related to um, a band or um, a label or um, a site or anything like in the, um, in the music community. So, um, so for instance, maybe like, you know, say on like Xbox where you have your, um, your uh, avatar. Um, so like, say like a Metallica t-shirt for your avatar. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Stuff like that. Yeah, mm -hmm. so it's like, I mean, so uh, I, unfortunately like Sims doesn't do this and Sam uh, Austin who comes sometimes, he's a big Sims player. And uh, like, I don't understand. That seems like a cash cow for, the Sims yeah. company. I don't know who makes Sims, but like that, that seems like, I mean, just yeah. so perfect um, for yeah. what they do. Like um, <laughs> like, yeah. I, I mean, I say that, I say that having never played Sims, but from what I know about it, it just seems like that would be like, Oh yeah, you, you buy digital clothes for your Sim. And I don't know, that's mm -hmm. what I would do. But um, I think that like VR is starting to get, you know, like, there's more people doing that. Um, so there's, there's probably some opportunity there. I mean, certainly with like concerts, um, you know, like, um, you know, you put on your VR headset and then it would be like, your, you know, at, at the concert. Um, and so. And would digital merch require it being paid for or, or could it be not something necessarily. that someone is? Yeah, so it's just like you know, download this, um, you know, and upload it to your to your profile. You know, just to like show that you enjoy. You know, you're you're a part of our digital street team when you wear our band T-shirt on. Definitely not Sims because they don't have that. But um, yeah, stuff like that. Um, like Second Life, I guess Minecraft. Like I don't play any of these games, but like it seems like Minecraft would be another one where it'd be like. You know, yeah. here's our our music venue. You know, the, is, you just download it, download the the concert venue, and then like all your favorite bands are playing their music in the concert venue. You know, like um, yeah. it seems like there's opportunity there. I mean, like making things for games is not, you know, um, it's not something every musician is going to be capable of, of 
doing um, in you know in 2020. But uh, I think there's there's opportunity there, and I think uh, a lot of that opportunity has kind of like sped up um, because of um, you know shows being canceled in lots of yeah. places. Um, so I know that like some places were trying to uh, to open up this weekend in the U.S. July 4th are one of our biggest um, holidays. And um, we all call it July 4th, but Independence Day, I guess, the rest of the uh, for the rest of the planet. Um, but uh, Vanilla Ice was supposed to have a concert, and uh, they had to uh, – I think it had already been rescheduled once, maybe not, but uh, he had to reschedule it. So. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so I think Mark, um, Mark lost his uh, – he said his battery was pretty low, so that's probably what happened there. Um, so yeah, the digital merch thing, I think there's definitely a discussion there, but um, you know, it's like, I don't know, a lot of it is kind of, I, I think a lot of that conversation is like, oh, this would be a cool thing to see, and like without any sort of like stuff that exists, but it would be cool if people like knew of things that actually exist or things that you could actually do now um but i don't i don't play enough games i think games is where a lot of that is um yeah but there's uh, a there's a friend of mine in cape town he plays in a, a ska punk band called swatting bats and um i think they're like one of their members went overseas for a little bit and during that time they've been working on like a, a swatting bats video game oh nice yeah um yeah it's, it, it's like one of those like side scroller games where you're basically a bat and you have to of uh you know like a bat and you have to avoid like fl fly swatters or something like that and then they've digitized or tried to make their their songs um a bit midi or something like that yeah 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 um i Something about you saying that sparked an idea. Um, what we could do for the fifth voting topic is um, do like video game music, mm. and then maybe maybe that conversation will spark enough interest in the um, the digital merch um, okay. to uh, to have it. And uh, so I mentioned Victor. You probably don't know who Victor is, but um, he's a he's um, lives in Kazakhstan and he's a um, he's an electronic musician, you know, solo artist. So he. Cool. His uh, his stage name is Victor Van River. So I think he's interested for himself to maybe yeah. produce because he doesn't have a lot of opportunity in Kazakhstan um, for for his type of music. Um, so um, so I think he's interested in um, you know sort of like getting getting his name out there, um, and that's one way he he thinks he might be able to do it. Yeah. Um, but yeah. So. I think I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna put um, video game music on here, and um, so just some video music. And then, uh, yeah, so we've got our five. Like I said, um, I won't be here um, next week, but I'll, I'll plan to be back on the 19th. Um, Sean, did you have anything else that you wanted to um, to mention before we wrap things up? Um. Uh, well, just uh, a side note, uh, video game music can also, or like digital music can also fit like with the whole topic of lockdown and stuff. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. Just because, you know, it's, it's one way of trying to be creative when you can't actually visit people or be in confinement. Yeah. 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 Definitely a lot of times the, um, you know, these topics are, are intertwined and um i had always tried to sort of like pick topics that were kind of like on the edge of the discussion for a week and get those into the vote but i think um actually just sitting down with people and picking them picking on each week i think that's um and then if people do watch the video um they get a sense of like what i mean when i say you know i'm just writing like you know in some cases one word punk like what? Is, what does that even mean? Um, yeah. So this gives them a little like um, a little bit more to like mm -hmm. stew on as far as what what might be discussed next week. 
Um, but Sean, um, thanks so much for coming. Uh, I think it's great when we have, um, you know, different perspectives to come on to the show. Otherwise it's just like a bunch of people that, I mean, in Mark and I's case, like we've known each other for like a decade. So, um, you know, like, uh, we're, you know, we can, we, I'm sure we could, we could chat about music for a while, but it's kind of, um, it's great to have some, some, uh, new voices. Um, Okay. The, uh, Thanks. On the chat. So yeah. So and like, if you have oh. friends that um, are interested, you, or you think would be interested, feel uh, feel free to invite them to. to okay. Come. Cool. Oh, another um, an idea. I don't. I don't know if you guys have done this, um, but it might be interesting to do like a topic of like, what what's the weirdest music you've come across? Oh yeah, I, yeah. Um, I think I might have uh, have might have put abnormal music on um, the, for the vote one time, but, uh, but yeah, that um, Caleb, um, you know, is really into um, what I'll just say experimental music. So we often we often go in that direction. Um, okay. It's uh, it's definitely something that we could um, we could um, revisit. Um, yeah. Again, but I think I, I, that's another one that might be good to have me around for. So uh, I think the one the ones we've got um, are pretty good for for next week. And then um, you know, if uh, hopefully um, you guys come up with some ideas for next week, I should have mentioned that to Caleb too. Actually, I'll just I'll just message him and say, you know, just pick five topics, put a poll up, and then that'll that'll determine what we talk about on the nineteenth. So. Okay. Cool. Sweet. All right, Sean. Well, I'm sure it's getting on the late side over there. So, um, yeah. Yeah. Oh. Th thanks for inviting me. Um, yeah. No, thanks so much for coming. All right, man. Uh, I'm going to uh, click this leave button, which will end the recording. And then, um, yeah, that's it. <laughs> okay. Cool. Right. Later. Okay.